Okay, the last thing I want to work with for the moment is what if I want to have some custom icons? We've got the choice of 50 icons, which is nice, but it doesn't have my perfect icon, my company logo icon, for example. And we basically have to figure out, do we want to use raster graphics or vector graphics for these icons? Let me bring back my notepad file again here and write a couple more notes. With custom notes on custom icons. Decide on uh, raster graphics or vector, not vector, vector graphics. What the difference between of the, these are is that these are pixel bitmaps. And then this one is basically equations. A raster graphic is made out of a grid of dots. As we're seeing here, when I zoom in on my projector, we're seeing the dots that make up everything here. You see how far I've zoomed in, and you're seeing each individual dot, like on the letter X or L or whatever. These are raster graphics. Each individual pixel is visible and editable. That's a raster graphic. Uh, vector graphics are based on equations. So we have, you know, the equation uh, that defines a circle. R equals 7. The radius is 7. So it's a, it's a circle of size, you know, 14, doubling the radius, right? So if we want to make a larger circle, all we do is r equals 27. And now you've got a bigger circle. You need a smaller circle, r equals 2. You've got a smaller circle. So vector graphics are based on equations, whereas raster are based on pixels. And so we kind of saw an example of this when we were building our icon. I said, let's start at a large size, 512 then shrink it down to the various sizes. Because raster graphics lose quality when you grow or shrink them. When you have a small graphic and you have to make it large, it has to invent pixels to fill in the gaps of making it larger. You had a square that was 2 by 2, and if you double it up to 4 by 4, you have to invent pixels in between. So that's how you get that fuzzy, pixelated look. I see it all the time, and I still laugh at it when I go to, like, let's say, a local restaurant, and I look at their menu, and the, pe and the pictures on the menu look horrible. They look pixelated, because on the website, they look amazing. But then when they printed it out, they look terrible, because they had to grow that little icon from their website to be 5 inches on the page. It looks terrible. Uh, vector graphics, on the other hand, do not lose quality when you grow or shrink them. Do not lose quality when grow shrink. So that's why oftentimes logos of companies are made in as vector graphics. Um, because they need to change the size of that graphic to suit many form factors. The problem is the short answer you make raster graphics in Photoshop and you make vector graphics in Illustrator. That's the short answer. How many of you have some experience in Photoshop? Most people here. How many of you have some experience in Illustrator? How many of you would say your experience in Illustrator is the same as your experience and ability in Photoshop? Very few people. So again there, 
that's a down that's a downside then a lot. If you want to make the best kinds of vector graphics, usually using Illustrator, well, Illustrator is a whole new software that you have to learn and get good at, like you got good at Photoshop. And Photoshop is very cool though because it does have a lot of cool built-in vector features. That whole thing we were playing with about shapes, that's all vector. You can grow and shrink those shapes very easily and not lose quality. But then when you get the paintbrush and start brushing things, that's vec that's raster and you lose quality. So people that are really versed in Illustrator can make really complex, cool-looking things that don't lose quality. I learned Illustrator a while ago. I haven't used Illustrator in a while. I don't know how to use Illustrator anymore. It changes. You use it or you lose it. So I'm not comfortable getting into Illustrator to do very anything that useful because I haven't used it very recently. Open up Photoshop and I know what I'm doing there, but not quite in Illustrator. This discussion then goes back to this. These icons can be vector or raster. And if they are vector, that's a little better because then depending on the size of the device that it's put onto, the icons won't lose quality. We can still use raster graphics. We just have to keep in mind we need to start with larger sizes so that they shrink and grow appropriately. If I start off with a graphic that I'm designing as a tiny 16 by 16 pixel raster graphic, and then I open it up on my tablet, that picture's probably going to look terrible because it has to take that little graphic that I drew and made it big. If I took the time to craft it over an Illustrator as, as vector, it didn't matter if I started small because then it could grow it nice and big. In our case, we will start with, we will use a raster image starting off at a larger size. That's the way to combat this. So decide on which one. So either create graphics in uh, vector software like Illustrator is the big one or Photoshop shapes or the Bezier pen tool there's also an open source alternative to Illustrator out there. You might have heard the open source alternative to Photoshop, GIMP, G-I-M-P, GIMP. If you don't want to pay what Photoshop costs, you can go get GIMP for free, and it's like a Photoshop. Uh, it doesn't have every single feature. Illustrator. There's a version that's open source of Illustrator also. Does anyone know the Illustrator alternative? It's called Inkscape. It's like Illustrator. It doesn't have every feature of Illustrator, but it lets you create vector graphics. If you know Illustrator, Inkscape should be very familiar, but the icons might be a little different in the menus and such. Inkscape. I believe it's for Windows and Mac. I'm going to say either create graphics in vector or create large versions of your raster images. Those will then grow and shrink as appropriate. And how large, that's going to depend. But I'm going to say a good, uh, a good size 72 pixels squared. If it's a square icon, of course. 72 should be okay depending on the kinds of icons you'll be using. That'll be okay because then, depending on the size of those little buttons, that'll be good. As you test this and experiment on different devices, you might see, actually, I should have been using, like, you know, 125 pixel sized ones. And as we get more and more advanced devices and we get these 4K devices, monitors that are on our pockets, then we're going to need to be at larger and larger sizes. So then again, the vector versions are better, but they have those caveats. I'm going to provide you with an icon to use because we need to do two things. We need to provide an icon graphic and then we need to write some code. So I've got an icon for us to work with. A little narcissism here. I'm going to give you an icon of myself and we're going to use that icon in our app if you'd like. But once you know the code you can use your own icon. It's a simple square image and I'm giving it to you as 72 by 72. If you look in the network folder If you look in the network folder, um, 
you'll see vcampo, VM Campos Instagram, blah blah JPEG. Copy that over to your project folder or use your own graphic if you'd like. But copy that one that I've got for you into your project folder. You can put it in the images folder if you'd like to organize it all. Copy that, put it into your project. Mm, I will put it in image, I might as well. Copy the image over. I'll show this to you first separately to see what the syntax of it is because it's going to be different than we're used to a little bit. We'll do this on a brand new button that we will create just to see what it looks like. Then we will um, then we could apply it to other elements. So make sure you've got the graphic in your project. We will go back, I'm gonna say, just to test this out, on the home screen, we'll create a brand new button right here. We'll give it my new icon. You can of course apply what we're going to do to these up here in a little bit. Let's make a brand new button on the home page right below the about button. <coughs> So open your index file. We need to go over to line 69. We have UI block A. That's the block that's going to be right below the first button. We're going to do this a little bit differently than before. So here's how we'll, we'll do it. We'll say um, I don't know, we'll say something like account, and we will wrap an A tag around it. It's going to be like a link href. We won't make it go anywhere just at the moment. We are not going to add data role. We are not going to add data icon, etc. Because there's a couple of ways to do this. The shorthand, this makes sense. Data role equals button data icon equals info. But all three of these, button, info, pop, whatever, all three of these can be sort of put into a different sort of syntax via classes. If we go look back at jQueryMobile.com, it'll tell us all about you can do things via data roles, or you can do things via classes. That's sort of what's happening here with class equals UI grid. Uh, in theory, data role equals grid but it's done by a class. So here, on this particular button that we're creating, we will add class equals ui-btn, that's like data role equals button, space, ui-btn-inline. There is a space between these two right here. We're saying we're using the jQuery mobile to classify this as a button and inline so that it doesn't stretch out. That's the same as data inline equals true. But here we're just saying use the button inline class. At the very least, it should have created an icon, a button that is. We didn't specify anything about roundedness. So we'd have to specify roundness. Notice that's also a little bit different in that it's very subtle, but there's no drop shadow. There's a little slight drop shadow behind it, not on this one. So if this is like we're crafting a button from scratch with classes. And we can go look up all of these things about it, because I could make an icon, a button here, that is rounded only on the top corners, not on the bottom. That one's automatically rounded all the way around because I use data roll button. Data roll button has a built-in CSS to make it behave a certain way. Here we're building one from scratch. I next want to add an icon. So we've got a uh, button, we've got inline. I'm going to say first ui-btn-icon-left. We haven't specified where the icon should appear. We'll say it's on the left of the text. That would be the same as, uh, remember we had data, 
icon pause, data icon POS equals left, right, up, down, whatever, top, bottom. Here we're doing UI BTN icon left. Obviously, if we had done icon dash right, it would go on the right. Icon dash top at the top. This will just give us an empty little placeholder. We don't have an icon yet. We want our icon. So the next one, the last one is, this time it's going to be UI dash icon dash my icon. The syntax here is we're specifying, we're using jQuery mobile to specify an icon. Notice it didn't use BTN because that could be applied to things that are perhaps not a BTN. And then we're saying my icon. Well, this should also work with something that is already predefined like user. What do we have? User, we have uh, bars, you know, what are all of these built-in ones that we did previously of data roll button equals user, data roll button equals bars, data roll buttons equals email. The syntax via CSS is UI dash icon dash the name of the icon, such as caret dash L. Right? So it's a different way of writing the same thing. One reason to do this is because it's all compact in one class, one attribute, rather than many attributes. It could be faster to edit also. Now, we're also doing it this way because we're having my icon. We're going to invent my own icon. I could call this whatever I want. I could call it maybe even better, you know, VMC icon. My icon. My initials. We could make this up to be whatever we want it to be. Icon VMC, icon Victor, anything. My icon. This won't give us any result because there's no definition that explains what is my icon. Now we need to write some custom CSS to define what is my icon. So confirm at this point that it kind of works, except that it doesn't really show the icon yet. Because then we're going to switch over to the CSS file, the kotika.css file, to define my icon. Icon-user is defined in the jQuery mobile CSS file. Icon-bars is defined in the jQuery mobile CSS file. But my icon is not. <coughs> Save this index file, and let's switch over to the uh, kodika.external.css file. So if we go over to the CSS file, we can add this anywhere. Uh, let's just add it at the end. Here's what we need to do. Dot UI dash icon dash my icon. And something new and special here, colon after. This is the pseudo selector, I believe what it's called. This is, um, I'll explain what it does in a moment, but this is the syntax to define what my icon needs. In here, then we have to say, here's the picture that we mean. But that's the way we define the selector from the HTML file. Inside of this, don't forget the open and close curly braces. Inside of this, then we say background dash image colon URL open close parentheses semicolon. We're going to display a, an image inside of this element, actually a background image. This is how the jQuery mobile specification tells us to do it. URL then is a location about where that picture is. This is in quotes, and this is a path. So in the images folder, we have the name of my graphic. Hopefully you copied and pasted it. 
whatever the name of the graphic is, you need to put it in there. Make sure your folder, if you put the graphic in the folder, of course, reference the folder in the path, images slash the name of the graphic. I would recommend you copy and paste the name of that graphic because it's got a lot of numbers and such. If you save it and run it, kind of works. There I am peeking through. It's a little big. Didn't we give it a big graphic? Well, it's a little too big for this size. It's it might be fine for a certain size, it's too big for this one, but we have a little bit more CSS we can do here. We specify the image, but we didn't specify a size to use it in the element, so it'll just show it as big as it can. And here with a little bit of CSS3, background, here's another property in the same selector, background-size, 100% space 100%. It's width and its height. Shrink it or grow it to be 100% the size of the element it's inside of, which depends on the size of the button on the device. Here's before. I haven't uh, made any edit. Here's after. The graphic is shrunk down to fit within its size. Now, I didn't exactly design that graphic to look the best in this spot. Notice how these graphics are simple, solid designs. That's the epitome of a good graphic in modern app design. This is just a graphic. It's a square graphic. It fits. It's not the best graphic for it to work here, but conceptually, it's working. That's our code. We had to write some CSS, which is basically adding the class UI, UI icon, my icon. Uh, then we wrote the code. If we wanted it to add it up to the um, actual menu, right here we did it from a button from scratch. We saw the syntax. If we wanted it, if we wanted to add it to an existing menu, you know, there's the home button. Notice my syntax here. Data icon equals my icon. I strip away the UI part. I strip away the icon part. I just say the name of my unique icon. can of course use that wherever I want. And then there's my icon everywhere. So I, again, I didn't create an icon that works, that really visually works, but it, that's the icon, how the code works. Before we wrap it, one, one more thing. Uh, according to the specification, this is enough, but we should we should add one more sort of failsafe here, because this uh, this version of the graphic is not a vector graphic. It's raster, so we should kind of spell that out. This chunk of code, if it worked, copy this whole chunk of code, this whole selector and its property and value and paste it after itself and we will add one more class dot ui dash 
no SVG space. Sometimes simply having the first one doesn't quite work because it doesn't display the graphic properly. Here, then, we are specifying this is the non-vector version, VG, scalable vector graphic, SVG. This is the non-vector graphic version. This is just kind of crossing all the T's and dotting all the I's. It's the exact same code as before, but it has one more extra property. Make sure there's a space between no SVG and my icon. Okay, this I believe after what after does is it adds um, it adds content. Does it add content after the existing element? Um, I forget the exact detail of it, but we can do a quick look up here. CSS pseudo element after. We can get the exact definition. What does after do? matches a virtual last child of the selected element. It is typically used to add cosmetic content to an element by using content property. We didn't do content, but uh, we did background image. So it's um, going to add, in a special way, content, visual content to an element after the last child of the selected one. So any anything that is set to my icon add this to it, basically. Short answer is that's how the specification over on jQuery Mobile is written to how to do it. And uh, you see this trick to kind of do interesting visual things here and there. Like if we want to add um, if we wanted to add like an exclamation point, this wouldn't really work. But the concept would be that at the end of every single paragraph, I would have P colon after. I would have the content of an exclamation point added to every one afterward. In this case, we don't have the content. You know. If we remove Well, I don't think it'll work, but we can obviously we easy jump. What's that? We it took over the whole background of the whole, but because we've applied the we've applied the class to the whole to the whole button, so the whole button gets the graphic. Yeah, these are some of these CSS things that can get. Rather complex, but when it works, it works. So it is necessary, and then we've got our own custom graphic. Again, the better way that this is done is that we have an actual graphic that was designed nicely to fit there. It's it's this is a jumble. If you didn't know it was my picture, you wouldn't be able to tell what that is. If I had taken the time to design a real graphic, or what about if I go over to emoji1.com? and download that one and tweak it a little bit and use that as my unique icon set. And you can find plenty of other icon sets um, to use. The jQuery mobile one has these built-in ones, but we can go over to Angular um, and use those icons or uh, what else, the Intel XDK set and etc. Everyone's got their own sort of icon set. This is just the one that comes with uh, jQuery mobile. So final questions as we're getting to the end of the day. We um, have started to really uh, customize our project here. When we come back next time, we're going to start to talk about, uh, now we need to get a little bit more advanced 
regarding uh, databases. We need to add more complexity to our project, our web project here. If you run it on a device, okay, it takes a photo, but like what use is, is it? The use is that if you, if you want to fully test what we're going to get, what we're going to end, and I've mentioned it before, but now you should check out just to see what we're going to end up with. If you go over to Google Play, to the real app store, maybe on your real device, and look up my SDCE. This is what we're going to end up with. If you download that actual app, it'll look reminiscent. But the concept is it's going to have this brand new database stuff, saving bits of data that we specify, text, pictures, whatever. It's going to save it. In our case, we're going to save a list of classes. We're going to do what any database does. Save to the database, retrieve from the database, edit content on a database, delete content from the database. That's what I want to do here. In our case, we'll save class information. We can delete it, we can retrieve it, etc. Show it, all of that. That's going to be a database. We need to start to talk about the concept of JSON, J-S-O-N, next week, because we won't have class Thursday, remember. JSON is a way to store uh, data. And then eventually the um, the database that we're going to work with, if you want to start educating yourself about it, is called PouchDB. It's one of these modern NoSQL databases. That is, it doesn't need a server, although it could use one. It doesn't. It doesn't use SQL um, commands. It uses JavaScript. It uses what we've been learning about JavaScript, about methods and objects and such. It's a database that runs in the browser, which means it runs on the device. It doesn't need any server, although it has the ability to replicate its data to a server if you, if you have a server that you can connect to. We'll get to that a, a week from Thursday, most likely. We might get to it on Tuesday, because on Tuesday we're going to start to talk about JSON, J-S-O-N. We will look at, I think it's json.org. Here's a little quick preview. You can look at json.org. We're going to do a lesson about this, what JSON is, how do you use it. It's a basically a simple way to store and retrieve data. And this is like becoming the lingua franca of the web, the universal language. You can use JSON formatting to interface with Twitter, with Facebook, with Google, with Flickr, with all of these data-driven websites to retrieve data from their database for you to use in your app. Because app-driven I mean, data-driven apps are the thing now. Like, okay, great, your app looks nice and you've got buttons and animations, but what does it do? It saves and retrieves data. It, it saves pictures. It stores data on a database, etc. That's a big endeavor. Many ways to do it. We're doing it via PouchDB, but the foundation, will, it'll help us to learn about JSON, how this works, key value pairs, all of that stuff. We'll do that starting on Tuesday. Any, and I would recommend, check out the app here. I'm not just trying to get downloads for it. Go check out the, the app, see how this final version of it works. It's free. This is what we're going to end up with eventually. And of course, a real store listing for this app to go up if you want. That's going to be part three of the class. What I do want downloads about, if you'd like, you can go check out the VGAS Smart Tracker app. This is to keep track of your... Uh, gas mileage is a real app, it really works and all of that, based on the concept we learned in this class. And watch a cool video that helps um, really get you hyped up to download it. There is, but this one doesn't have that feature yet. Were there any general questions about what we've talked about today? Um, the data icon, the attribute, mm -hmm. um, do we need to create some kind of uh, icon? Yes, if you want a different, completely different icon, let's say... If it's the same, and then you create a data icon, you don't need to create the UI, but UI... UI is reserved for jQuery, but... Do 
I'm just uh, lines that my icon will hit the URL icon. If I wanted to use it like this, data icon, yeah. I would simply say my icon, and that would use the existing one. So the UI icon will be used. Yeah. Yes, the one that we've created so right here. If the system will know this, this class will be used. It'll know to take off all of that part of the class, the UI icon. It'll just know to use my icon, yes. So the data UI is for different data. This Data is HTML5. Yeah. All right, that's it for the moment. I'll put my latest notes into the folder, and I'll put a copy of my latest code into the network folder also. So make sure you, if you came in a little late, make sure you signed in. And if you missed it, 